We've seen how erosion is causing a real problem for a lot of people along this coast and how any scheme to try and stop it would be costly, unsightly and might not be very effective. But as strange as it seems with all this talk of erosion, there are parts of this coast that are actually accumulating material and we've got something called longshore drift to thank for that. Longshore drift is an action of the tide and it actually moves sand and pebbles along the shore. As the waves break up onto the beach, they break at an angle and then pull straight back. So as they do so, they push the stones up onto the beach this way and then pull them straight back. Push them onto the beach this way and then pull them straight back. As each successive wave repeats this action, it zigzags the stones along the shore. The breaking wave is called the swash, and as the wave runs back into the sea, it's called the backwash. Now, these have different energies. The swash is much stronger and will carry the heavier stones up the beach. But now the wave's energy is exhausted, and the backwash is nowhere near as strong and can only pull the smaller stones back. This means that the larger stones tend to end up higher up on the beach, with the smaller stones and the sand nearer the sea. But of course, not every tide is the same. Sometimes in storm conditions or very high tides, the water will come much higher up the beaches right to the foot of the cliffs, and the larger stones will find themselves on the move again. One of the best places to see stones sorted like this is Douglas Beach. Here, near the sea wall, are the larger stones pushed up by the swash. The less powerful backwash has only been able to pull back the smaller stones, which are lower down the beach. The occasional larger stone in this area is probably on its way up to the other large stones, moving a little further with each tide. It's a constant cycle on all beaches, and on the west coast as the cliffs collapse, more sand and more stones are brought down and successive high tides will move this material as well. So we know the sea is taking all this material away from here and moving it along the beach. But where's it all going? Is there a huge pile of stones and sand somewhere up north? Well, actually there is, and there are some strange things happening up there. This is one of the most extraordinary landscapes on the Isle of Man. It's the Point of Air, and it's the most northerly tip of the island, which juts out into the Irish Sea over there. Scotland is just a few miles north, and in fact, I'm closer to Scotland here than I am to Douglas. This beautiful building behind me is the Point of Air Lighthouse. It's over 180 years old, and it was built in 1818, as so many ships were getting wrecked, passing the point with its turbulent currents. Although since then, things haven't worked out quite as expected. Ships were still running aground here, especially during fog when it was difficult to see the light. So 70 years after the lighthouse was put here, this fog horn was built, with two great horns on the roof which blasted a mighty cord out to sea through the mist. But there was still a problem. As the years had passed, it was found the original lighthouse was no longer on the shore. Something strange was happening. The point of air was getting bigger. Therefore, a radical solution was needed. Let me introduce you to the Winky. Well, the Winky is this special little light that was built here on the beach at the point, and it flashes on and off every three seconds, hence its name. It was built here at the same time as the Foghorn, because by 1888 so many more stones had appeared that the original lighthouse was effectively inland, and not much use really for telling ships where the coast was anymore.
Indeed, in these rare fragments of archive footage from the middle of the last century, we see a vessel run aground at the point. Sailing past at night, ships could easily think they were a safe distance from the lighthouse, but because the point of air was growing, they were often misled and ran aground. Even today, ships come very close to the point to avoid the nearby currents. It's easy to see that in the dark they could be misled by a lighthouse that wasn't where it should be. The Winky seemed like the perfect solution, but the point is growing so fast that it had to be moved, because originally it used to be further back. In fact, another 80 metres further back. So in 1950 it was moved to here, but who knows how long it'll stay here. Footage shot in 1949 shows the Winky in its original position next to the Foghorn. And this photograph from around 1910 shows it next to the original Foghorn with just one horn. You can just see the sea glistening in the background, showing that at that time the Winky in its original position was right on the edge of the beach. There must be hundreds of millions of stones here as far as the eye can see and there's more turning up every day. But the peculiar thing is that they're pretty much all the same size. There's no sand or gravel and there's no really big boulders. They're all about this size. So the question is where are they coming from and how are they being sorted? If you stand right on the tip here you can see the strong currents pulling past. They run up the west coast swirl past here and go off in a great curve to the southeast. Over there is a marker buoy which warns shipping of dangerous sandbanks just a few metres below the surface. And the action of the tide is key to what's happening here. The current pulls the sand with it out to sea, which is why there's none on the beach here. But what it isn't strong enough to do is move the big boulders that are on the seabed. But what it does do, especially when it's stormy, is pick up these types of stones and throw them up here, producing a massive shingle beach, which is growing bigger by the year. So, the longshore drift is pulling these stones up the western coast and dumping them here. And if you look at the point of air from above, you can clearly see what's happening. The original lighthouse is now away from the shoreline and the foghorn and the auxiliary light are now in the front line as the point continues to grow. And whilst this huge bank of stones is growing above water, the sand is growing underwater. This map of the Irish Sea showing the contours of the seabed clearly shows giant sand dunes off the northeast of the point. So this is where the western beaches are ending up, cleverly sorted into stones marked by the lighthouses and sand dunes marked by the buoy. Well, those marvellous lighthouses aren't the only point of interest up here, because just south of the Winky is something that can only be described as the Stinky, and it's right here. This is Wright's Pit East. It's the island's current landfill site, or the tip as we all know it. And until the island's incinerator comes online, it's where we bury all our rubbish. And trust me, on a warm day, you want to be as far away from it as possible. Unless you're a seagull, of course. Now we know that the point of air is getting bigger. 
but just a short way down the coast towards Ramsey, the story is quite different. At Cranstall, there once stood some cottages, but in the 1960s and 70s, they gradually fell into the sea. And all that's left here now is the road that once led to them. It must have been very dispiriting for the owners to have to watch the gradual collapse of their homes as the sea undermined the gardens. And no doubt this would have happened to David Greenwood's house if he hadn't surrounded it with granite blocks. There's something else to note here as well. Because the north of the island is sand and gravel, and there's no stone to quarry for building, people often use the larger stones from the beaches for their walls. Here, though, the sea is claiming them back. Indeed, in 1946, a three-kilometre stretch of this coast, two metres wide, was ripped away one night in a violent storm. So how safe is this bit of coast? Now, the experts assure us that this section of the coast isn't eroding, although it is midpoint between the severe erosion south of me at Cranstall and the ever-advancing beach north of me at the Point of Air. And the sea is unpredictable. So who knows when a violent storm may come and take advantage of a weakness like this and start ripping into the landscape. But the Department of the Environment has a plan. When the tip is full, it'll be covered over with earth and planted, and it's hoped that the heath will return. The heather and the gorse will grow again, and within a generation, people will have forgotten what was here. And that's the problem. In 50 or 100 years time, no one is going to remember that there's thousands of tons of rubbish buried here. And if the coast erodes up to where I'm standing, what'll happen? Well, the department tell me that they're going to bury giant concrete markers at each corner. So if the coast erodes, they'll be exposed. Revealing a sign saying something to the effect of, if you can read this, please ring the Department of the Environment. Now, if there still is a department that far in the future, will the person answering the phone have any idea what that sign is referring to? Let's hope so, because as the first thousand plastic bags go washing out to sea, it's probably too late to do anything about it. Man's efforts to hold back the sea have never been much more successful than King Canute in the 11th century. And here on the Isle of Man, the government and many landowners will have to face the inevitable consequences of coastal erosion and the relentless sea. <laughs>